For over 200 years, the official currency of the United States of America has been the almighty dollar. But how did it come to be our legal tender? And why does the dollar bill look the way it does? Well, today we're going to take a look at the history of the dollar bill. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel. After that, leave a comment and let us know what other financial topics you would like to hear about. Okay, time to show me the money. When the earliest settlers of the 13 American colonies arrived in the New World, they brought along gold and various British coins. But like everyone else who's ever carried cash on a trip, they quickly ran out of money. This left them with no means to buy food or other necessities from nearby indigenous tribes or even each other. Obviously, this was bad. In the absence of cash and coin, the settlers started to trade with commodity money, which included things like tobacco, beaver skins, or certain kinds of shells called wampum. In fact, wampum was so important that in 1637, the Massachusetts Bay Colony declared them to be legal tender. But commodity trading has its limits. For example, the value of a crop like tobacco can wildly fluctuate depending on the success of the harvest, and over time it dries up and loses its value. Imagine going to pay for lunch and finding out the money in your wallet has expired, like an old banana. Or crypto. The settlers didn't have too many other options. The British government wouldn't allow the export of gold and silver coins, and also refused to let the colonists mint their own. However, Spanish coins were much easier to come by. As a result, most of the coins in circulation during the colonial era were of Spanish or Portuguese origin. In fact, for the vast majority of the 17th and 18th centuries, the Spanish peso, also known as the Spanish dollar, was one of the few widely accepted currencies. The earliest paper currency in America was issued by the Massachusetts Bay Colony in 1690 for the purpose of funding a military expedition during King William's War. Other colonies followed suit and began printing their own currency in connection with other military conflicts. Basically, little IOUs giving you the exciting opportunity to invest in violent national disagreements. This early colonial money was denominated in pounds, shillings, and pence, but the value of those denominations could vary from colony to colony. So a pound in Massachusetts might be worth less than a pound in Pennsylvania. Obviously, this created some confusion, and that confusion led to serious economic problems. As a result, Parliament passed a law banning the colonies from printing their own money. Of course, Parliament's authority ran out when the Revolutionary War began in 1775. That war was a lot longer and a lot more expensive than anyone had predicted, so the colonies, taking a page from the King's Book, issued paper currency to help fund the conflict. The bills issued by the Continental Congress were known as Continentals. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Unfortunately, when the war ended in September of 1783, they were pretty much worthless. The newly formed United States needed to come up with something to stabilize the economy. So on July 6, 1785, the Continental Congress of the United States convened in New York and designated the dollar as the country's official currency. It was also agreed that the dollar would work off a decimal system, allotting 100 cents to each dollar. But since this was Congress, there was no way they were going to agree on everything. The extent to which the federal government should dictate financial policy to the states became a sticking point, and as a result, it wouldn't be until 1792 that the country would establish a national mint. And even then, it wouldn't be until 1862 that the U.S. Treasury would be able to print dollar bills. In other words, it seems the American government has been making things unnecessarily complicated literally since the day it was born. The word dollar is an altered form of the Germanic word tala, which itself is an abbreviated form of Joachim's tala, which was the name of a silver coin struck in 1519 by the Kingdom of Bohemia. Still with me? Okay, let's keep going. The coin got its name because it was made from silver mined in St. Joachimsthal. The word tala spread throughout the world. The Dutch variation, Dela, made its way to the New World with some of the earliest immigrants. The modern word dollar is a direct descendant of the Dutch term. The origin of the dollar sign, however, is a bit of a mystery. Recognized throughout the world, the dollar sign is practically synonymous with U.S. currency. 
The dollar sign first appeared in print sometime around 1800, and we know it was widely used long before the first paper dollar was issued in 1875. But other than that, all we have is theories. The most widely accepted theory is that the symbol evolved from the Spanish peso, which if you recall was the basic unit of value in colonial America during the late 1700s. Documents from that era record that the peso was abbreviated with the letters P and S. Historians believe that over time, the two letters were written on top of each other, creating a symbol that eventually mutated into the dollar sign. In 1861, Congress needed money to finance the Civil War, and to that end, it authorized the issuance of demand notes in denominations of five, 10, and 20 dollars. The $10 denomination was adorned with the portrait of President Abraham Lincoln, making him the first U.S. president to have his face on a bill. The reverse side of the notes was printed using a special anti-counterfeiting ink that was green in color. As a result, the bills were nicknamed Greenbacks. The first $1 bill was issued a year later in 1862, featuring a portrait of Treasury Secretary Salmon P. Chase. Chase is the namesake of Chase Bank, even though he didn't actually have anything to do with that business. They just kind of stole his name. Eh, should have gone with Salmon Bank. The modern look of the $1 bill officially dates to 1963, but many of the design elements that we associate with it were actually introduced in 1929. For example, the 1929 bill ditched Salmon P. Chase's mug for the now famous portrait of George Washington, which was created by Gilbert Stuart. The reverse side of the 1929 bill had a large, stylized number one on it. That would change in 1935, when the one was replaced with the Great Seal of the United States, and that weird pyramid topped off with the oddly psychedelic Eye of Providence, like the side of an airbrushed gig van. In 1957, the words, In God We Trust, were added, because if you want people to back your currency, you tell them it's what God keeps in his wallet. Anyone who has ever spent some time examining a dollar bill has noted that it is covered in symbols, some of which are seriously weird. Like, so weird you wouldn't carry it around in your pocket if it wasn't money. To start, there's the aforementioned Great Seal of the United States. The seal depicts an American eagle in flight, holding 13 arrows of war in its left talon and an olive branch of peace in its right talon. Which might be a confusing message, but it is a seriously rad-looking eagle. The eagle on the great seal also carries a banner in its beak, which reads E Pluribus Unum, a Latin phrase meaning out of many, one, a reference to a country made of many states and the 13 stars above the eagle represent the 13 original colonies, as well as the birth of a new nation as if it were a new constellation in the universe. Well, that certainly doesn't lack confidence. Across from the Great Seal is the most confounding image, an unfinished pyramid of 13 rows, allegedly symbolizing strength and duration. The lowest row on the pyramid has the number 1776 emblazoned in Roman numerals, and just below it is a banner that reads Novus Ordo Seclorum, which means a new order of the ages, referring to a new form of government. At the top of the pyramid is that paranoia-inducing eye of providence, which represents the all-seeing eye of the divine. It's surrounded by the Latin phrase Anuit Septus, which means providence has favored our undertakings. Providence, in this case, referring to the protective care of God, and not the capital of Rhode Island, probably. The dollars we spend today are printed on a very special kind of paper, made by Crane & Company, a Massachusetts-based manufacturer that has been providing the U.S. Bureau of Engraving and Printing with paper for currency since 1879. This paper is 25% linen and 75% cotton, and has tiny red and blue fibers of various lengths evenly distributed throughout it. The paper serves as an anti-counterfeiting measure, since it's not available to the general public. But that's just one of several. There's also the use of color-shifting ink, which changes the ink color from green to black when the bill is held at different angles, sort of like a magic eye, or that meme about the black and blue dress, or was it white and gold? Modern bills also have a security thread woven into the paper, these threads run from top to bottom and display the currency denomination. You see the security thread for yourself by holding a bill up to the light. Even cooler, if you shine an ultraviolet light on one, it will glow a certain color respective to each bill. That particular feature may be less about counterfeit protection 
and more about just having fun. There's also microprinting, words that appear in a font so tiny they just look like solid lines unless placed under magnification. Yet another anti-counterfeiting measure is the inclusion of a watermark. Located just right of the portrait, the watermark can be seen from both sides of the bill. On the 10, 20, 50, and 100, it's another image of the bill's featured president, but on the 5, for some reason, it's the number 5. There are no watermarks on the $1 bill. If you're trying to conquer the criminal underworld by printing counterfeit singles, the government apparently feels like you could use all the help you can get. You may have noticed that old money is hard to find. That's because as new money is printed, old money is gathered and destroyed. In fact, money is destroyed every day by one of three entities, the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, the U.S. Mint, or the Federal Reserve. The chief reason bills are destroyed is that they've become damaged or mangled during circulation. Damaged bills can't be used in vending machines, ATMs, or other electronic bill readers, so they need to be taken out of circulation. And this happens more often than you'd think. In fact, the average life of a $1 bill is only about three and a half years. That's less time than it takes to crank out a Thor sequel. Bills submitted to the Federal Reserve Banks are checked for fitness by a high-speed sorting machine called the Banknote Processing System 3000. The machine checks bills for defects like tears, limpness, graffiti, dog ears, or excessive soiling. Eh, only excessive soiling? I want my money with no soiling. Any bill that isn't up to snuff is shredded by the machine and then buried in a landfill, or handed out as a souvenir to people taking Federal Reserve Bank tours. The amount of money the Fed destroys varies from year to year but is usually in the neighborhood of five to seven billion dollars. Which seems wasteful. Can they just give the old money away? You know, to me. So what do you think? Which fact about the dollar's history surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from Our Weird History.